and the latest, of course, is what we're still in the middle of, this pandemic. Uh, and here are the numbers from Johns Hopkins University. Now 113 million confirmed cases of coronavirus worldwide. Death toll in this country alone now surpassing 508,000. Encouraging numbers from the CDC. Now more than 68.2 million doses of the vaccine administered. Doc, we could always Making say we, we, we wish it could have been better roll out, faster roll out, but yep. that is positive that more people are getting those shots in the arms. But now we keep learning. <laughs> it's been amazing the past year how much we've learned, and now we're That's learning right. more about COVID and diabetes. Yeah, so we've talked about it before. There's the way the virus behaves, which is important and interesting, and then the, there's the way humans behave, and then there's the way the virus behaves in the body. So <laughs> let's do a deep dive on diabetes and what we know with COVID-19. So remember, first of all, type 1 diabetes you're not making enough insulin. Type 2, you're making insulin. It doesn't work as well. Theory is that the virus may attack the insulin-producing cells that are located in the pancreas. Another theory is that the virus we know causes massive inflammation. That can, in turn, increase insulin resistance. Also, people who are treated for COVID-19 with steroids, that can affect blood sugar. That's well known. And then there are some patients who may have had undiagnosed diabetes before COVID, and then they recover, and they find now they're dealing with diabetes. So all of these things on the table in terms of the pathophysiology in COVID. All right, Dr. Ashton, thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.